the IMF and economists got wrong about economic growth and about governance and human society in general. Unlike what economists believe, capital flows and investment cannot lead to sustained economic growth. They merely lead to the build-up of bubbles, which will burst sooner or later. Only a myriad of individual initiatives in all layers of society can improve the efficiency of economic activity leading to long-term growth. The problem, nowadays, individual initiatives is crushed under a multi-layered piling up of laws, decrees and regulations of all sorts. This leads to the destruction of the social consensus regarding democracy, the rule of law, human rights and environmental issues. If we don't fix this problem, the rise in extremism will accelerate until it reaches catastrophic proportions. Let's have a look at the excellent GDP data provided by the IMF, the World Bank and the Madison Project. What experts don't see, if represented on a logarithmic scale, the GDP line of most high-income countries follows a flattening out second-degree polynomial trend line. This means that the growth rate of the trend line decreases in a linear way. In the case of many countries, it has already reached or exceeded its peak. Every past attempt to push GDP above the trend line only led to the build-up of a bubble which burst in an economic crisis. Ignoring these facts, IMF forecasts for some countries predict growth way above the long-term trend line. What is it that the IMF and virtually all economists don't understand? Increasing investment into an economy does not lead to sustainable growth, as the following examples show. Around 1980, the collapse of food prices led to protracted economic crisis in many developing countries. International capital looked for new investment opportunities and found them in Southeast Asia. Thailand and Indonesia are perfect examples of investment bubbles where a massive influx of capital did not lead to sustained growth. After the bubbles burst in 1998, GDP returned to the continuation of the long-term trend before the massive capital influx. Another example, starting in the 1990s, Greece got massive EU loans and subsidies which only led to the build-up of a massive bubble. After the bubble burst, GDP returned to the long-term trend line, which is actually almost flat. Here are again the massive US and UK bubbles, which burst in 2008. Excessive influx of foreign funds, quantitative easing or tax breaks for the rich, all of which stimulate investments, only produce bubbles, not sustained growth. The same is true for deficit spending. Does this mean that we must or even can accept zero growth or negative growth? No. In the very long term, since the year 1800, the US GDP trend line shows a linear increase of the growth rate, except for the last 10 years. Gradually, more countries have joined the Economic Growth Club. We need growth to rebuild energy and transport infrastructure and to renovate housing in order to tackle climate change. How can we explain and reverse the recent decrease of GDP growth? One important factor is certainly the unbridled piling up of regulations at all levels, which has become unsustainable. Regulations, formal abstract knowledge, hierarchy and networking are everything. Skills, experience and the ability to get things done are increasingly disregarded. Not only SMEs, but also employees working at all levels in larger structures get crushed by regulations and legal requirements. 
This is due to both laws and administrative procedures, as well as regulations internal to each enterprise and organization. This is not to say that we must deregulate. We need laws and regulations to prevent abuses. But we must work much harder to simplify and streamline the regulatory framework than to pile up new regulations. Otherwise, those who want to destroy the rule of law to replace it by the rule of hatred will get the upper hand.